Welcome ladies and gentlemen. I have a new model to build. This is ARC Models Panzerkampfwagen 38T Ausführung G. This was uh, the last model designation of the Czechoslovakia uh, made Panzer 38T. It was built from October 1941 until July 1942. 320 out of a 500 piece order were made. Here you can see the model put together. I don't think I hurt anyone's feeling when I say the overall quality of the model kit was awful. Not by not in means of the details represent, represented. They were effectively very fine or good enough for a decent model. I have problems with uh, dents in plain areas, uh, overall a lot of flashes, a lot of cleanup to do, but at the end it went together um, with the help of some Vallejo putty. I will show you um, how, the, how about one third of the sprue looked like. That's the return roller for um, the tracks. And you see, you have to do a lot of cleaning. The tracks itself, um, they were not, not much better. We have a single link um, tracks, which is very nice. I like this very much. But uh, yeah, you will see. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks God, they, they supplied a lot of them, so you could... Uh, it's, possible to dodge the worst ones. This is by no means uh, me bashing um, ARC models. I have a few other models in a stash uh, which are fine. I think this is an exception and I will give it another go with another model. I basically spray paint the complete thing um, with Vallejo um, dark grey. The Panzer gray color. It's a very, very dark surface primer. And you will see me <laughs> having a little bit of struggle with my Iwata Neo. That's um, just me using the wrong tool for the wrong um, job. I have upgraded since then to a, a Chinese made 0.5 millimeter um, airbrush for this kind of job. And that works much better putting the Iwata Neo. Um, back to some medium detail work where it belongs, at least I think so. So the model kit itself um, comes very um, reasonable priced. It's on the lower end of the um, yeah, of this of the, your options when you go to a model kit store. So I'm not unhappy with um, what I bought. I think I got a re really good model out of it. A few words about the the real model. As you can see, me struggling with dry tips. <laughs> so the real model, um, yeah, 324 built out of 500. Um, that's because um, with the assault on Russia, the Russians showed up with the T-34 and yeah, rendered the complete um, series of this tank basically useless. The um, final model designation G had, um, had already uh, 50mm armor plates uh, bolted and welted onto the complete front. But with the um, 35 millimeter gun, it was simply outclassed by the um, by the Russian tanks, and so it went obsolete. But that's um, basically the entrance to the complete um, variant series of this um, tank model or of this um, chassis or drive, however you want to call it. And this is because basically why I bought it. So, um, doing the Panzer Grey color, which would be the only choice for the time being, or for that time, I tried to use um, two or three different grey tones I have laying around. This is Mr. Hobby color. 
I try to brighten up the center of each panel and yeah, giving it a little bit more uh, three-dimensional appearance. The problem with these um, cement gray, for example, is it leans towards um, green or leans towards yellow from uh, the point of view when you go <laughs> when your point of view is being is the blue color. So I had to apply a filter to uh, unifying it back in color temperature and bring it over all the impression of a. Um, of the gray being a blue shade. That's fine, um, not because they were <laughs> part of the navy, but um, yeah, blue represents, as always, blue, re blue represents um, shadow, and so it's a pleasing choice for the eye of the viewer. The original model would be much more darker. These uh, Panzer gray, they were not to support not thought to um, give a good camo on open surf surface they were basically a mixture from a mixture of being a shadow camo or industrial urban camo and um, they will dust down very fast when you drive them over um, open field just sit in a black car get it washed and <laughs> Go for a drive, you will, for a ride, you will see what I mean. Now I jump forward, I just painted the details and gave the whole thing a wash with um, some grey pigments. The pigment settled down very nicely where you would usually expect a pin wash or extended pin wash to go. The decals they supplied are representing the 20th and the 22nd Panzer Division. The 522 goes together with the arrow and the 6 or the 9 uh, together with the E. So um, I had some problems here. This is um, why I think the kit is not um, put well together. The 522, if you use this um, turret number, you will end up between the bolts on the turret. Um, this is... Uh, yeah. Good luck with um, setting this down in this location. Also, they didn't put the right sizes in. That's not. I, I went with the only reasonable choice, and that was the turret number six. Um, yeah, you see me putting this on as turret number nine because turret number nine are the on, is the only model that have has available reference photos on the internet. By flipping it around, um, it did a job. The decals, however, the material are is really really nice. They settle down without any silvering as soon as you lose use a little bit of decal solution. Decal solvent um, really impressed by this, despite them not being the right size, not fitting at all. So I applied the tactical or tactical numbers and unit um, symbols, and usually. You would expect this tank to have um, three army symbols, um, what are called Balkenkreuz in Germany, but only one is the right size to be fitted onto the side. So it will be very helpful if you have a generic decal sheet at hand to replace them. As I said, this is fine for me. Um, it worked quite well at the end of the uh, build. And uh, yeah, I was not very happy with the exhaust pipe. Um, even this tank was back in its time already on the receiving end. It's no baboon at all. So I went from this uh, bright rust back to a little bit more uh, settled rust effect. I still have to use a few pigments on it. As far as weathering goes, I did put some rain streaks on with uh, oil paint and did a little bit of dusting with pigments. And yeah, here and there I went on one or two nuts with a, a brown pin wash just to break up the surface or break up the, yeah, this, the overall appearance. I still have to figure out how I deal with um, these 20 ton jacks in all my builds, so I left it bolt guard metal, um, 
basically just primed it. I will revise this in a later, at a later point. The last step I did here was uh, putting acrylic furnace over the model. I use um, artist supply uh, stuff just because that's the best quality I can get my hands on. There is no um, these things are classified as classified this category sized as archival, so they won't change their color. They will be they will stay there and protect the model. And overall, the price is just a little bit better than the um, yeah, model maker brands, I think. After letting it dry for a few hours, um, I went again over the um, top surface with just a little bit pigment. I don't want this tank to be weathered down to um, no, re <laughs> yeah, to being not able to recognize it again as one. My models are um, just to not to be seen as a um, one-piece artwork. I'm I'm a beginner. I say it again. I would like these models to be finished within um, three to four evenings, and I will only for me this model these models stand in context to each other and not um, one for one. So here you can see the final model, the final build. I am quite happy with how it came, uh, came out. In the meantime, since the video was made and uh, my personal progress went on, I did solve the, my problems with dealing with tracks. Um, they look much more realistic, much better now. Um, I'm always ahead a few, a few, a few builds of my video and audio recording. I do the video right away when I build it and the audio recording basically when the project is completed. I would like you guys to um, join this channel and subscribe, stay tuned. I really thank my first two subscribers for showing up here. Help this channel grow out of um, nothing and yeah, what you see me here is uh, putting a model, um, the model 3, next to it. That was basically the next step of evolution of these um, tank series. The 35mm cannon was just not doing the job, so they came up with a solution. They kept the chassis and put another superstructure on it, or a different superstructure, making it one of the um, well-known tank hunters, open top, but 7.62 centimeters Russian anti-tank gun mounted on it as an intermediate solution. I do have stashed up all variants as uh, kits, so there will be some more showing up in the future. You can see um, it's still the same tank, basically, just um, improvised and uh, yeah, the model free served uh, until the end of the war. From the point of engineering, that was, I think, a very clever job. So, next episode, I will go over this one. That's another point of interest of mine. That's a Fauka 45.01. That's the Porsche Tiger prototype. And I do have a lot of models stashed up out of these series too. So stay tuned. See you guys next time. Happy modeling.